Gelin. Gelin. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we are going to craft the most effective and properly optimized Claws of Night build. You have been requesting this weapon recently along with many other weapons, so it's time to showcase the true power of these cool claws. Don't worry, eventually I will craft all the builds you are requesting, I just ask you for a little bit of patience. The Claws of Night are a little bit complicated to obtain. The steps to get this weapon are the same you have to do to obtain the Sword of Night. Basically, you have to complete the entire Emir questline. You will get this weapon right before facing Medir after defeating the invasion. Anna. I am actually surprised of the performance of this weapon. Claws are not my favorite class of the game, but this one definitely stands out of the rest. It has the longest range of this weapon category, I love its dark design, and under the riser up, it is capable to deal a significant amount of damage. First of all, I will address the main features of this weapon, I will explain the details of the build, and I'm going to test it against the most difficult bosses of the DLC and the base game. So without anything further to say, let's make this weapon shine. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMO EXP is the best website where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. The Claws of Night are probably the strongest weapon of its own class because of its amazing range and outstanding damage output. They are very easy to build, really practical to use as well, and they show a great performance in almost every scenario. This weapon deals physical and magic damage, and just as the Sword of Night, it doesn't scale with intelligence at all. The Claws of Night scale only with dexterity. This will allow us to split our stats points in any other attribute we find useful. This weapon has a unique R2 that throws the claws as projectiles without any FP cost. Sadly, the stance damage of this attack doesn't seem to be quite significant. Also, this weapon has a unique R2 variation. If you press the dodge button while performing the heavy attack, you will activate an evasive slash maneuver that throws a few projectiles as well. It seems like this attack is only available for a few weapon categories, but it's different on each one of them. I don't think it is life changing, but it's nice to have a unique movement that makes the weapon a little bit more special. However, the best part of this weapon is that, as many other weapons of the DLC, if we two hand it, we will obtain another one for free. Unlocking a really fast R1 power stance moveset that is perfectly useful to build a lot of damage using the successive attacks buffs. Using this moveset will be extremely easy as we will recover almost instantly, allowing us to be as aggressive as we want without getting hardly punished. And with the passive bleed build up this weapon has, suddenly we will take chunks of HP out from our targets if they are still alive, of course. The unique skill of this weapon is named Scattershot Throw. It's literally the same skill that the Ash of War provides for the throwing daggers, but it's seems to deal a little bit of less damage and to have a shorter range. This skill is very cool but it's not my favorite feature of this weapon, not because it's bad but it's not as good as it looks. As you know I like to play at a very close range, where I am able to hit a single target with almost every single projectile. However, even if you hit the target with all the projectiles, it seems to be the same damage as if you do it with only a few of them. That is something that I don't really like of this skill. It should reward the risky effort of trying to hit the enemies with every single projectile. Anyways, the damage is still decent, it looks very nice and it hits the Corbian style of this build in incredibly fine. Those are the main features of this weapon, now let's take a look to the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Claws of Night on plus 10 and then still we have available to cast our main buffs. I strongly recommend you to have any weapon with the Raptor of the Mistash of War to be able to deal the AoE attack of Mikela against Radan. The Claws of Night use a very similar build to the Sword of Night 1, so you can use this katana as a secondary weapon. I am using the Knight's Armor set with the Malikets Helm, only to get a similar style to the Corbian Knights from Dark Souls 3, but you can use any other armor set you like. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Smithing Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodden Windsor Insignia. But if you are missing one of these talismans, the Magic Scorpion Charm and the Lord of Blood's Exultation are great alternatives as well. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. If we stack the buff of the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodden Windsor Insignia, and the Thorny Crack Tear with the Blood Sucking Crack Tear, we are going to deal a lot of damage with this weapon. Anyways, if you don't like to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear, feel free to change it for any other tier you find useful. You can use the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear, the Stone Barb Crack Tear, or the Green Spill Crystal Tear. Those three options are very good for this build too. And only if you are not going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear, a great alternative is the Ritual Sword Talisman. I really like this talisman, but I prefer using the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and including another talisman on my talisman setup. But that depends completely on your playstyle, so feel free to modify the build as much as you like in order to make it perfect for you. This weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going 
going to use 50 on Vigor, 24 on Mind, 45 on Endurance, 99 on Dexterity, and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs, but Flame Grant Me Strength is a decent alternative if you don't want to take any extra damage. And as you can see, I have my Scattership Blessing on the level 20, and in this case, it is completely necessary to have it all the way up to 20 to make an effective use of this build in the latest scenarios of the DLC. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we set the night with this weapon? Okay guys, to buff your character with this weapon is pretty simple, you use Golden Vow first, then a Pickle Turtle Neck, which is completely optional, we use our Flask of Wondrous Physic, and then we cast Halo Shabriri, it's the same buff routine as always, and now you are ready to go. Amazing. I can't believe I dodged that that way, that was cool. Oh. <laughs> Here we go, baby. Amazing. Wow, this thing is broken, bro. Get him. Get him. Get him, bro. <laughs> Let's go. I'm playing it. Let's do this, guys. I don't have too much time, but I'll do it. Come on. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. It took me a few tries, but we did it. <laughs> 